Hey dolls and welcome back to my channel. So I'm very excited for this video because today we are going to do a first impression, a review, and a wear test of Patrick Starr's One Size Foundation. This is his new foundation. He just launched this. And this is One Size Turn Up The Base BBB Cream. Beauty Blur Balm Cream. Patrick Starr is such a Filipino pride. I've met him when he went here in Toronto. I just love him. He's very accommodating. He still speaks Tagalog. His family was very warm. I met Peter and his other friend and I met his dad. And they're just so genuinely nice. So I'm just so happy that he has his own brand. And I've used his setting spray and that one is amazing. So I'm really excited to try this one now. So on Sephora's website, this foundation is described as a revolutionary, one-of-a-kind, blurring beauty balm that improves the appearance of skin texture with all-day hydration and comfortable all-day wear. It has a natural finish. It has a liquid formulation and it has white rose stem cells derived from the Japanese white rose known for resiliency. They quickly improve the appearance of skin tone and absorb oil over time. It also has skin-like treated pigments. Lightweight skin mimicking technology instantly blurs and feels like your skin. Avocado and mango hydro blend boosts your hydration for visibly smooth skin texture. And when it comes to claims, it claims to be a triple threat against texture. It's also a 3-in-1 powered by skincare to blur skin texture, absorb oil, and boost hydration. And the buildable formula maximizes blur with a breathable, undetectable second skin finish. And this retails for 43 Canadian dollars for 30 ml amongst all the radiant foundation that I've tried from Sephora. This seems to be the cheapest. Most of them range from 55 to 60. The packaging of this foundation is also quite unique because usually with this kind of packaging, you have to open it. You have to remove the seal. Don't forget to remove the seal. Remove the seal and then you just directly put it on your palette or the back of your hand to apply but this one once you remove the seal and put on the cap you can actually disperse by just pushing the top part and you can disperse the foundation i think that's a genius idea for packaging because you don't need to twist the cap and i think it's less messy this way and it's just so easy to put in your purse. It's very lightweight. So when it comes to packaging, Patrick Star really nailed it. Now the shade that I got is medium 1N. I'm going to show you some of the other shades that I was debating about. I think the next shade is going to be olive. And I'm usually warm tone. But I feel like it's going to be too dark for me. And I, when I swatch it on my hand, it was kind of dark for me. So I hope that this shade will work for me. So before trying this on, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about my skin type. I have oily combination skin. Like I'm really oily on my T-zone and dry on some other parts because it's winter here in Canada. And in my previous video, I have been priming with this e.l.f. Putty Primer. So just for consistency, I'm also going to prime with this primer. So this is how my face looks like before the foundation. So they suggest to use just your fingers when applying this foundation and if you want a medium to full coverage, use a sponge. So on my right side, I'm just going to use my fingers and then on my left side, if I feel like I need more coverage, I'm going to use a sponge. I think that for radiant foundation, it's very important to shake your foundation. I think with any foundation really because there's so many ingredients there so you just really want to make sure that everything is mixed together. Okay, so I'm going to put it on the back of my hand. Oh, it's like a mousse, kind of. When I dispersed it, it kind of reminds me of a mousse. Like it's not really flowing through the back of my hand. It's not very thin. It holds its shape, like even if I shake it. So it kind of reminds me of a mousse. I'm going to use my fingers. I'm going to start in the middle of my face. Ooh, yes, it's really reminding me of a mousse foundation. It glides very easily. It's a different texture. It's definitely not 
thin, but it's very satiny. Like, it feels so smooth on your face. And it's scent free. The coverage is really good. It says that you can have a medium coverage with this. It doesn't say full. So I think that with one pump, you can actually achieve that medium coverage. Maybe I'm just going to add a little bit more my sunspots. I like the texture of it. It's very smooth but like cushion smooth if that makes sense. I'm gonna go closer and show you the side with the foundation and the side without. I think that with just one pump of foundation it really gave me that medium coverage and I still have a little foundation on the back of my hand. I like that about it. It really helped in hiding my sunspots on the side of my cheeks. It also helped in blurring the pores on the side of my cheeks over here. I wouldn't say it's 100% blurring my deep, big pores on my cheeks, but it really helps. Like compared to this side with no foundation, you can see the blurring effect on this side with the foundation. When it comes to radiance, I don't think it's too radiant. Usually when I use radiant foundations, I can really see highlight on my cheekbones but looking at the camera and even looking at the mirror I don't see a lot of radiance. I think this is more of a soft matte foundation. What really amazed me about this foundation is that it really feels good on my face. Now that it's setting I feel like I already put powder even though I didn't because it's just so smooth on my face. I can't help but like touch my face because it's very soft. And I think of all the foundations I've tried, including BB creams and CC creams, this is the most lightweight foundation. I hope you guys can feel it because it's just very light and very soft on the face. Okay, let's try the sponge on the other side. I'm gonna start in the center of my face. To be honest, I don't know if it's because I like the feel of this foundation on my fingers, but I think that using your fingers is better than using a sponge. Because again, it's like a moussey texture, so I think that using your fingers can really blend this better than using a sponge. So this is the sponge side, and this is the finger side. I feel like the sponge side is a little streaky, and it didn't give me a lot of coverage. You can still see my freckles. So I'm gonna add a little more foundation on my left side and I'm going to use my fingers. The best way that I find to really cover my freckles is to just use my fingers and just tap it where I want more coverage. I don't even think I need concealer because this actually really helped in hiding like my discoloration under my eyes too. And I just recently bought this, this is the e.l.f. Putty Blush in the shade Bahamas. And I feel like this will be good to test out as well. Oh, that's a nice color. Foundation is actually moving when I'm putting a cream product. So I might have to add more foundation there. Yeah, like I can see my freckles now because the foundation moved. I think I'm going to use my fingers to put the blush because if I use a brush, the foundation moves. And I think I'm going to use a powder bronzer. For sure this foundation will move if I use my cream contour. I like this color though. I might have to touch up a little bit though. I'm going to also set a little on the side of my cheeks because the foundation can really move. Okay. There you go. I'm gonna leave this without a setting powder so we can see how the foundation works. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish my makeup. and So I finished my makeup and when it comes to creams, I don't think that this is the best base. When I was putting my cream blush, the foundation actually moved. So I would suggest that you set this foundation first with powder, with a setting powder, and then go on with your powder contour and your powder blush. 
But so far, I really like the coverage. I actually didn't even use a concealer because it really helped in evening out my skin tone even under my eyes. And my powder also really blended well on top of this foundation. It's very lightweight and it's very skin-like. And if you know me, I like foundations that are very skin-like. And bonus, if it really feels light and breathable on the face. So next, let's do the photography test. So now that we're done with the photography test, I'm just going to update you on the wearability of this foundation. Before that, I'll be setting this foundation with Scandinavia's finishing spray. This is what I've been using for my previous foundation reviews. So I'm going to use it now as well. Okay, so I'll be back on the fourth hour and on the eighth hour. So on the fourth hour, I noticed that the side where I use my fingers looks better than the side where I initially use a sponge. This side looks more blurred out, like my pores are more blurred out than on the side where I use a sponge. I'm getting a little oily on my forehead, but that's the only part that is oily on my face. It really helped control the oil on my face. And it's hard to find a BB cream or CC cream that has that technology of oil control. And usually people with texture and big pores also are very oily. So having that blurring effect and that oil control in one foundation is a really big plus for me. And the coverage is still there. I went outside, I wore a mask. I actually was very scared of this foundation moving because initially when it wasn't set, it was moving with my cream products but once it set so i didn't even see a transfer on my mask and nothing really moved like everything is where it was the first time i applied it and i swear this foundation feels nothing on your face and i think that's because of the hydration aspect of the foundation so far i'm really amazed by the formulation of this foundation this one is really performing well on my face so far so i'll update you on the eight hour and then i'll give you my final okay now i'm back and it is the eight hour mark so this is the side where i use a sponge initially and i can see a very prominent wear off on this side and i think that's because that's the spot where i put my cream blush so this foundation combined with cream is really not effective because it would really move and now it's gone just this part like everything is still intact but where i put my blush it's gone by now but i'm very surprised because usually on my nose my foundation would fade away on the eight hour but my foundation on my nose is still there and on my right side where i use my fingers it is still looking good now let's do the blot paper test so i really got a lot of oil on my forehead but now that i blotted all the oil my foundation looks very fresh again so here are my final thoughts about this foundation i'm giving this foundation a four star out of five stars First of all, it can really give you a good medium coverage with just a small amount. I didn't even have to use any concealer to spot treat. I just used my fingers and then I just dabbed the foundation on areas where I need more coverage. I also like that it's very skin-like. I didn't look like I have a lot of makeup on while evening out my skin tone. And it really helped in controlling my oil. I know that I got oily on my forehead, but usually i'm oily all over my t-zone and to not have an oily nose at the eight hours kind of a rare moment for me and while controlling my oil it didn't really feel very matte or very tight on my face it feels very light and very breathable now for my cons since this formulation is again very unique it's really a learning curve on how to apply it but when you master it you're gonna love this foundation i would say really start with your fingers and really spread this well and before 
even putting your setting powder, make sure that you really press and spread because you know if there's creases on your foundation and then you put the powder, the powder will just seal all those creases. Look in the mirror, make sure that there's no creases and everything is blended well before putting on your setting powder and then your other powder product. Another con is that this really is not suitable for cream products. So if you have a favorite cream blush, cream bronzer, I would suggest skipping that. If you use this foundation with your cream products, it would just really move or disappear on your face where you put that cream product. I think that this will be good for all skin types, may it be normal, oily, combination. I even think that this will be a good everyday foundation because it's very light on the face. And you can adjust the coverage, you can just share it out for every day and then for events where you need more coverage you can just build it up and i really love a lot of unique things about this foundation i think that this is a very well thought of foundation they reinvented the squeeze tube into this push cap so you can easily dispense your foundation i also really like that they thought of a formulation that can blur pores can control your oil and can even out your skin tone. Those three things are really hard to find in just one foundation at $43. And meanwhile, being vegan, cruelty-free, and alcohol-free. So this foundation gets my 100% approval. If you have been thinking of getting this foundation, I would say give it a go. And if you have tried this foundation and you have dry or sensitive skin, kindly share your experience down on the comments below so we can help our community. In my next video, I'll be reviewing this new Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. Makeup Forever has again reformulated their foundation and I'm very excited to try this on so watch out for that on my next video in the meantime don't forget to check my foundation playlist where i review both high-end and drugstore foundations i hope you guys find this video helpful and if you did please don't forget to like this video please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll always be updated once a new video is out thank you so so much dolls again for watching i'll see you on my next one